Hi, I'm crab biologist Don Velasquez. And I'm crab biologist Don Rothis. Let's go crabby. The first and most important thing to understand about setting up your pot is make sure you have enough line and the proper type of line in order to get this to the depths that you want. In this case, we're using leaded crab line. This is our recommendation for you when you're setting up your crab gear. You don't want floating crab line because it will sit and spool at the surface. Somebody will drive by and wrap it up in their prop. So make sure you get leaded crab line. Additionally, you want to make sure you have at least 30 or 40 more feet of scope on your line or extra length of line to deal with things like tidal height changes or current. So make sure you set up your line properly. A second thing to consider to make sure you can get back to your pot is to weight the crab pot properly. In this case, we've got a box full of leaded weights adding about 10 or 15 pounds to this particular pot. If a current comes up with this amount of weight and the proper scope on the line, we'll always be able to come back and find our pot. A really critical part of a crab pot is a scape cord. And here you can see we've wired in one of the escape rings with a biodegradable line. So this bio biodegradable line will rot out in about uh, 30 days and allow an escape route for any crabs that have been trapped in this pot should this trap be lost and on the bottom. So make sure you have rot cord on your pot. Another requirement of a crab pot is two escape rings. The rings have to be four and a quarter inches and they need to be located on the upper half of your pot. You can see here on this Danielson style pot, square pot, I've got escape rings on this corner. I also have an escape ring in this corner. Finally, before you throw your pot in the water, it's really critical that you check to see that each of your doors is functioning properly. You want to make sure the door flexes in, but doesn't flex back out. So a crab can get into your pot, but they're not going to get back out of your pot. You should check all four of your gates before you throw the pot in the water. So now let's take a look at a round pot and see how I might set that pot up just a little bit differently. So we talked about square pots. Now let's briefly touch on uh, circular pots or commercial style pots. In this case, we're gonna use the same lead line that we talked about with the square pots, but there's some features of the round pot that may make this pot actually fish a little bit better than your standard square pot. These round pots are equipped with tunnels, so the crab has a ramp in which to come up and come into the pot. Again, you have the same gate mechanism as you had with the square pot, so make sure you check that before you deploy the pot. The other uh, thing that's a little bit different on the round pot than the square pot is a lot of times the escape rings are lo located on the upper half of the side. And in this case I have two escape rings, one here, four and a quarter inches again, and one on the opposite side, four and a quarter inches. These escape rings allow juvenile crab to get out of the pots so they're not harmed by the larger crabs as they go in there and try to get a, a little piece of the action that's going on inside this crab pot. 
Now, if you look closely on this crab pot, you'll see that the rod cord in this case is rigged up a little differently. It's actually attached to the rubber band that's holding the lid of this crab pot closed. And I'm going to show you something real quick. When we pop this rod cord, as if we're simulating this being a trap on the bottom that's been lost, you can see what happens, and it's pretty dramatic. When that pops off, that lid's going to pop wide open. Now any crab that are trapped inside this pot can get out, go to freedom, live to be caught another day, let's just say. So while I have this pot open, let's talk a little bit about bait. A lot of people like to go and get turkey legs or chicken at their local uh, Costco or Safeway or QFC. Well, if you want advice from crab biologists, we recommend that you try to use a mixture of baits. We like to use a little bit of squid, maybe some cockles or clam of some type, and then some sort of oily fish, fatty fish, like salmon heads or salmon carcasses or herring. Um, any of those will provide a nice oily scent trail that will draw a crab to your trap. So I would be remiss if I didn't also talk about how to set up a buoy properly. As a recreational crabber, you're required to have a red and white buoy. But the requirement that a lot of people fail to initiate is to get your name and address properly on the pot and on the buoy. In this case, you have to have your first and your last name on the buoy, your full address, including the city and the state. It's nice if you add the zip code and a bonus is that you add a phone number that we can reach you by. If you lose this pot and you have a phone number on here, then we have a much better chance of getting this pot back to you if it's lost. Finally, you're only allowed to fish two pieces of gear at any time when you're on the water. So if you have four pots and you're bringing family or friends out, make sure you bring along some white duct tape and a pen. And as it's been done here, you can tape over the buoy and put somebody else's name, address, and potentially phone number on that buoy. So they can have two pieces of gear too, and you won't be out of compliance. So that's it. Use these methods, catch more crab. Well, everyone, our pots have been soaking for a couple hours now, uh, and we are gonna go out there and check them with some of our WDF family today. It's a family activity. We've got Jen Bosworth in the middle, Isla, and Taya Bosworth. We'll go see what our uh, treasure hunt of crabs has produced. Okay, we're gonna put, pull our first pot out here. Uh, girls, do you think there's gonna be anything in this one? Have you done this before? Yep. Yeah. All right, what's gonna be in there? A whole lot of crab. All right, let's do it. We just pulled this nice pot, got a few nice keepers in here. So the first thing we're going to do is open this thing up and, and start measuring. Let's just talk a moment about measuring crabs in the correct fashion, okay? Yeah, but that's easy, Don. Can't we just use a dollar bill? <laughs> oh. No? How about a length of string with two knots on it? That would work, right? How about my fingers? This is like, this is almost six and a quarter inches, isn't it? No. <laughs> well, I've got a ruler. Will that work? Let's see, I mean, you know, that's, that's easily like nine inch crab, isn't it? No. 
Well, well, what am I supposed to do? Don, they actually make devices to measure crab. They're called gauges. There's different types. This is a commercial crab gauge with a six and a quarter inch measure. 6.25, measure before the points, the last set of points. Yes, this is a legal crab. Some of the more common recreational gauges are made out of plastic. Their function is in the same manner, right before the last set of points to determine if it's a legal sized crab. Never use those other methods. Dollar bills are six and an eighth inches long. Your eyeball never judges that ruler correctly. And the piece of string, that's a new one. I've never heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> in all seriousness though, when we measure crab, remember, you do not include this little point right here. That doesn't count for your length. Neither does this one on this side. You measure in between the inside of those points. A lot of people make that mistake. So let's start doing it right. The next thing we need to do is check to see if it is a soft shell crab. It's illegal to retain soft shell crabs. Soft shell is defined as a crab that when you push the claw in and pinch here on the shell, it pop cans in, hence a soft shell. It, may also, it probably will also be soft here, this first large segment on the first walking leg. In this case, this crab is a hard shell crab, nice dark color, and it's legal to keep. Okay, I'm gonna show you the difference between a male and a female Dungeness crab. Here we have a female and here we have a male. On the female crab, the abdominal flap is very wide and that's where she carries her eggs and where they incubate before they hatch. On the male crab, the abdominal flap is very narrow and that's how you tell the difference between a male and a female crab. Okay, so now that we've kept a crab uh, we, we need to record it immediately on our catch record card. Uh, in this case, uh, we are fishing after Labor Day, so I have a winter crab catch record card. If I was crabbing in the summertime before Labor Day, it would be a summer crab card. And you're required to immediately write down the marine area, in this case, marine area seven, the month, September, month nine, day, 11, and for each crab, Dungeness crab that you keep, you need to record a check mark. So I put my first check mark on there. Uh, red rock crab are not required to be recorded on a catch record card. It's only the Dungeness crab in Puget Sound that need to be recorded. So Don, we had a really good day out on the water. We caught a few limits. But as we went through the day, I got to thinking, wow, we have a lot of rules and regulations in this fishery. Six and a quarter inch size limit, male crab only. We have a season structure, and we have that catch record card. Why so complicated? You're right, Don, it is complicated. But you know, all those rules are related to that 3S management strategy that we have used in Washington and other states for years in managing Dungeness crab. The male sex, the six and a quarter inch size in Puget Sound, the avoiding the soft shell season when crab are real vulnerable to handling mortality. It's all related to conserving that resource that's very important to our generation and all the future generations. So 3S, size, sex, and season, that makes a lot of sense. And the catch record card, we have to be able to attribute how many pounds of crab were landed in a given season. So the catch record card becomes vital for us to know what the impact of your fishing activities has been on this resource. So in closing, we had a great day on the water today. Dungeness crab, it's a classic opportunity here in Puget Sound, and I hope you can get out there and take advantage of it.